So, today's been a long day. It's, it's been, been a long, long day. day. So this is um, basically year two in our campaign, and the party currently consists of Kales, who is a female dwarven cleric. There's Kai, Kairis. She is a gnome ranger. Ura is a, I believe it's, he's an Ifrit fighter. And then there's Sodder, a quiet one. He is a half-elf bard slash now slash rogue. A lot of crazy stuff happened last year. This year started off in, uh, as the party's leaving Andal, a major plot point from last year. And they've been hired to escort a seemingly small uh, caravan down south to a town they haven't really been disclosed. Um, anyway, so uh, Horty, who took over as the leader of the guild, sent us out on this new assignment. And we were not very well informed. Um, we were to accompany this caravan of apples. <laughs> well, the guy called us a caravan. It was obviously just a wagon, because only one wagon. So, not a caravan, obviously. I don't really care. I suppose after all, I'm just in this for the money, the life of the bard. God, I hate my life. So, I'm not quite sure what's on this cart. I can sense that they kind of know something's in those barrels, but I also kind of feel like they've just kind of accepted the fact that it's just barrels of apples. What the crap? He has five people escorting this huge, these huge barrels of apples. There, there has to be something up with it, but I mean, as far as I can tell, um, like nobody knows anything about what's going on, and it's just, it's kind of strange. Uh, we are traveling with Olan, who is the owner of the apples, who seems like a very stern businessman type. Uh, Neddard, and Neddard, Eddard, Ned, uh, who is obviously a mercenary, he doesn't like to talk uh, about anything, looks uh, very, very serious and deep in thought all the time. There's also Mira as our guide, She's she seems to be fine, she's just leading us on our path. Um, but I'm not sure about Eddard, Eddard, he's... There's something up with him. He keeps insisting on having the first watch every night, and, you know, I just... I feel a bit uneasy about him, but, yeah. Kales really thinks a lot of people are sketchy. Does not trust a lot of people. Uh. The party doesn't know that Eddard and Olan are secretly working together to smuggle some magical goods from north that they have procured through, um unlawful means, to say the least. We we travel for a couple of days pretty uneventfully, and it just keeps going on and on and on, and everyone is getting really bored. I, I was in the back of the of the caravan. I mostly played music. Uh, I drowned out all of um, every, every sound, really. I'm not sure how long I'll stick around after the mission is done. I'm getting a little antsy. It's been a little too long since I've last hunted a mark on my own. Um, we met an interesting traveling wizard named Roderick on the way, and he's obviously a sham. Oh, vast that I thought I was alone in the woods, but little did they know they would fall into Roderick's trap. Trap of good deals. <laughs> Very obviously gay. Uh, the party mostly assumed he was gay just because he he's very weird and he talks like this. He's he's got magic. Not gay. He's just weird. Um, Ura ended up buying one of his products, and I I don't know I don't know why he did. He wasted all of his. <laughs> Ura decided that it would be a smart idea to buy a, oh gosh, not a leaf, a, a feather from him. A feather, like this little itty bitty feather. The, the one that looks like the devil. I gave him a special flower and me and him will get to hang out for five whole minutes. Anytime he wants, uh, preferably not at nights or the afternoon or the morning. 
whenever he's like, hey, I want Sir Roderick to be here, and in f like for five minutes he'll be there. Why would we want him? He was the most annoying character that we ever ran into. Yeah, no, I'm gonna use him. And, uh, probably gonna have to steal the rest of his feathers before five minutes are up because never gonna see that guy again. Hopefully. I'll probably kill him. Basically, everyone in my uh, party seems to be somewhat of a hypocrite still. Uh, we came across a, um, a half elf in trouble, so much of my own kind. And uh, the first person to talk to her was Coles, which, if I remember right, she treated me like absolute when we first met. So, um, what's the big deal? It's kind of uh, bullshit. We also ran into this lady, and she was in distress. And I don't, I don't even know what to think about her. She. I, I am so torn because I wanted to help her, but we were already committed to helping this guy and nobody else wanted to help her because you know what happened last time? Last time we almost got killed, we almost got burnt in this big house and there was a fire and there was a little child that almost got killed and she was evil. It was just a bad situation. We as a collective basically decided not to help her, which is very surprising because usually um, somebody acts out of some sense of self-righteousness and we end up getting into a whole nother world of just annoyance and unnecessary suffering. Um, so I was proud of us as a whole that we didn't stay to help her and I think our uh, our leader of this caravan was very pleased to see that we were sticking to the mission that he left for us. So. I also don't think they, like, they didn't seem interested to know who the girl was. Uh, find a girl in the middle of the wood road. I mean, that's... I mean, wh what? What? Little do they know, since they didn't even ask her name, this girl is actually a royalty of a nearby town, which they will probably get to eventually. And let's just say, there are the people there are not going to be happy. Her bodyguard heard a noise, told her to stay put on the road while he went to make sure everything was good. He never came back, so the girl asked the party for help, to which she was refused. And now she's left to fend for herself. Eh, I don't, I don't really feel bad about it. Maybe I should, but eh, no, not really. Things have been going suspiciously well since then. The only major thing was that we ran into this little bit of a rock slide in the path, so we have to take a detour. But it was, it's not really a well-known town on the map. It's not even really a town, it's just more like a small settlement hidden in this field of tall grasslands. Yeah, it's tall grass. We kept losing Kai in the middle of it. Went into a village, pretty, pretty dilapidated. It was not the best village, kind of sketchy, but I uh, once they arrived at this town, um, they decided to set up for the night. Most of them, w most of the party went into a very ramshackled, falling apart inn with this thin, scrawny old lady as the innkeeper. It's weird because the town is mostly empty, and yet there's a lot more houses than there are people. I, I just have a bad feeling about small towns that are in the middle of nowhere. It's, uh, I don't know, it's like one of those old bard's tales that get passed around. You know, the, the bad ones. It involves ghosts and beasties. Whatever. I went in the inn, tipped the lady some extra money to get some bedding. Um, probably gonna have to go get some goods at the store in the morning. And, I mean, I've, st I've stayed in cleaner places, but I guess I've also stayed and worse. So, I guess we'll see what happens. So far, I'm not sure what to think. Let's just say when we continue next session, uh, the wake-up call won't be pleasant. <laughs>